Metaclasses are, without a doubt, one of the most confusing aspects of Python. Uh, I get a lot of requests asking me to talk about metaclasses, and to be honest, until recently, I didn't really fully understand them myself, even. Uh, but I've since gone through, had another look, and it actually makes a lot more sense now. Uh, so I'm going to be kind of explaining, you know, the baselines of what uh, metaclasses are, and I'm also going to be giving you a usable example of metaclasses. Now, it is important to note that there are people out there that say uh, that metaclasses, or at least custom metaclasses, don't really have a place. Um, and I think for the most part that is kind of true. Uh, you know, custom, mes uh, custom meta classes. If you're doing something that you think needs them, then chances are there's a better way to do it. However, there are some situations where meta classes can be useful. Custom meta classes can be useful, and it is worth knowing, you know, the baseline knowledge of exactly how meta classes work because they are fundamental to Python. So the thing you need to know for definite before you can understand what meta classes are is that everything is an object. A function is an object, a class is an object as well. And the easiest way to define a meta class is that a meta class is to a class what a class is to an object. A class defines how an object is to be created. A meta class defines how a class is to be created. Um, which may or may not make sense to people, but I'll spend the rest of the video trying to explain it and hopefully it makes sense then. Um, but if it doesn't make too much sense, then there's probably not too much need to worry about it, thankfully. Uh, so our story starts with the type uh, function. Now this function is, well, it's actually a class, not a function, um, which is in itself an object. Hey, it's already getting confusing. Uh, but the type is the baseline meta class for every single object in Python. Um, if you were to go through all the bases, you would eventually get back to type. Even type has itself as its meta class. This type provides the initialization routines for every class, and all meta classes need to inherit from type. And essentially, this type is, as I say, the instructions of how to build a class. Um, so you may have seen it use, you know, type int or uh, you type like a variable for example so if i do var equals five and then type var uh, the result of that it will tell you that it is an integer if you do type int from there it will tell you that it is type type and that is the actual meta class itself but type can also be used to do more complicated things such as dynamically creating classes so if i were to do something like type or if i were to do like foo equals type and then give it a name and then give it a series of base classes in this case an empty tuple and then give it a you know a dict of attributes in this case an empty dictionary that would be exactly the same as doing this the two lines of code you see on the screen so this line and these two lines are completely and totally identical um, another example if i were to do uh, bar equals type bar and this time I was to get it to inherit from foo and then also give it another empty dictionary uh, that would be equivalent to writing this um, so now bar inherits from foo as we can tell by you know passing it foo as one of the base classes you could pass multiple through and it works you know very much the same way uh, generally speaking, you wouldn't use the type class to generate classes in this way. There may be some uses for it. I don't really know. Uh, but generally speaking, you'd use the standard class syntax because it's a bit more standard. Um, but the type is another way to do it. Uh, one more example, if I were to do baz, uh, and also we're doing a tour of metasyntactic variables. Um, I actually finally recently found out what they're called and the name is kind of funny so I thought I'd share that. Uh, do type ba ooh, baz, ba oh my god I cannot type, and if I was to inherit that from bar and also provide a number which equals 100 that would be the same as doing uh, this where you inherit from bar and then you have your init uh, like that, and then you set self dot number equals one hundred. That is exactly the same 
as doing that. Um, so now we have your know, class Baz that inherits some bar and a number gets set to 100. From here I should really explain how type actually goes about creating a class. So if you go back to this foo example up here, just this bit, uh, what we are doing there, uh, if I zoom in one more, if you remember what I said at the start in that everything is an object including functions and classes, if we define, you know, a function that's called bar, for example, this is nothing more than an object. Bar is now an object that you call. And every class has a call dunder, which takes self and then all the arguments and keyword arguments that were passed to the function to begin with. Um, and then you can just, you know, we're just gonna do a placeholder bit there. But this call defines what happens if we were to do something like foo um, with the brackets. So we're now calling our, oh actually it would be more like f foo and then if we were to do f. So we're now calling the instance. Um, and this is exactly what functions do. They just are objects that have a dunder call method uh, and their logic is contained in this dunder call. And when a type creates a class, uh, you you know, when you do the class instantiation here, that will um, call the dunder call of the class. And by default, it will call it super call, and then eventually it will get to type dot dunder call, which itself calls dunder new and dunder init. Um, dunder new actually creates the instance, and dunder init populates it with variables. Uh, or attributes, I should say. Generally speaking, you don't need to define Dunder New yourself unless you are doing some meta class stuff. By default, that's set up to just, you know, create an empty instance. Um, and then that then calls, well, actually, it's the it's the Dunder call that then calls the Dunder in it, that then populates it. This Dunder New is useful for its own reasons, but it will be useful in our use case example uh, because the new is generally used to um, kind of define how an instance is created. So one example of this, if I want to open a Python interpreter and do from pathlib import path and spell path correctly, if we were to do path like this, you'll see that it returns a POSIX path and not a path. And that's because the path object in the Dunder new has um, a little if statement, which is able to work out you know, which operating system we're running on. And if we're running on a Unix or a POSIX based operating system, like I'm, I'm on Mac OS, for example, then it will return a POSIX path. On Windows, that exact same code will return an NT path instead, which is ever so slightly different. And that's because <clears throat> the Dunder new is returning a POSIX path object or an NT path object, which then gets initialized in its own way. Um, and that is the power of the, uh, of the Dunder new. But you'll see it in the example that we're going to do. I'm going to give it um, a new file. And we're going to create a meta class to essentially create a copy method um, on any class that uses it as a meta class. So to create a meta class, you just create a standard class <clears throat> and you inherit from type. Now, this is essential. Um, all meta classes must inherit from type and all classes that inherit from type are inherently meta classes. That's worth keeping in mind. And in this particular example, we're gonna use the Dunder new, and this Dunder new takes the class, so it actually takes the class object, uh, the name, uh, which is the name of the class, the bases, which are the bases of the class, and the, uh, the namespace, or you know, sometimes it's a DCT, it depends exactly where you're looking. Uh, but that is the addictive attributes, and you will uh, realize that that is the same as what we're passing in here. So we're passing in the name, the bases, and the dictionary that gets passed in here. Uh, and then what we do then is we can do, you know, x equals super uh, dot dunder new, and then we pass the class, the name, the bases, and the DCT. For those of you that want to see the types, pause the video now, <clears throat> and this just gives you an overview of the types. I'm not gonna actually do types because this is already kind of complicated as it is. And I don't wanna overcomplicate it. So this X is actually 
our instance. It's not a class at this point. It is an instance. So I suppose you can think of it as self um, in a way. So we have now created our self. And what we're going to do here is we're going to create a method that gets attached to self. Uh, and this method is going to be def copy. And it's going to take self as an argument, uh, which is going to be confusing. So I'm going to rename this to object. Um, and we do return self.class. So this is now, actually, I'll do the whole thing and I'll kind of explain what's going on. Uh, so this copy is literally just instantiating a new object using the, um, the class of self and then giving it all of the dict. Hi there, editing me, just interjecting because I know people are going to call me out on this. The logic within that copy method is only really suitable for basic classes. If you want to do a proper, if, bleh, if you want to do a proper one, then you would import the copy module and you do copy dot deep copy self. Um, the example I wrote in this, you know, was just you know, a real quick one, uh, just to demonstrate how you can attach a method to an instance like this using the new uh, Dunder within meta classes. Um, but seeing this in editing, I knew people would call me out on it, so I had to do a little note. So sorry about that. Uh, we will go straight back into the video now. You have x.copy equals, oh, it would be object.copy now because I renamed it. Object.copy equals copy. And then you return the object. So now we have an instance of our object that hasn't run through the init yet. So it doesn't have all the attributes that were defined in an init, but it does now have a copy method attached to it. So doing, you know, if you were to instantiate an object and run object or copy, it would now run. Um, <clears throat> from there, we can define a class. So I'm going to continue our tour in metasyntactic variables and call this cucks. Um, which sounds a lot funny and it does on the it looks on the screen. And we're going to set a meta class equals copyable. So this is now setting uh, copyable as our meta class. It's not inheriting from it. It is setting it as the meta class instead of type. By default, it would do you know meta class equals type. We're doing it um, meta class equals copyable. And then we could just you know go about our business uh, defining whatever we want. So I'm going to use um, my example that I do love dearly, which is kind of creating a little profile of ourselves. And then we can just have self.name equals name, self.age equals age, and oh, oopsie daisies, and self.jobs equals jobs. You would actually also probably want to do none there and do jobs or empty list rather than define an empty list. There is an entirely different reason why you want to do that. But I'll go into that maybe some other video. So now, if we define um, x equals cux, and then I'll uh, give my name, Ethan, my age, which is 24, and my jobs, which is a software engineer, which is true. And then we do y equals x dot copy. And then we can see that if we print x dot name, and then I, I'm just going to copy this from my plans um, because it's just easier. Uh, then typing all that out, and then we'll also do print x dot jobs, uh, and then y dot jobs. If we then run that, uh, what you go away? I don't know what that was doing there. Um, so it'd be copyable. You can see that the name is the same, the age is the same, and the jobs are the same. If we were to do y dot age plus equals one, and then we were to print this again we can see that the, the age of our new class has gone up by one, but the age of the old class has stayed the same. So they are now two separate um, instances. They are not connected to each other, uh, which is, of course, what you want in a copy. So you may be asking at this point, why use a meta class and not just inherit from a mix-in or something like that? And the answer is there isn't really much of a reason to do that. The only thing you are doing is saving some additional calls. So if I were to pr do print copyable uh, new in here, and then if I were to do cux uh, init, and then if I were to just you know copy this, 
And again, so we're now creating two instances using the exact same method. If you print this again, we can see that the call variable new only gets called once, whereas the cucks in it gets called twice. So for each new class of cucks, I really should have named that something different, shouldn't I? Um, <laughs> uh, it prints a new init statement, but the copyable new only actually gets run once, even though it does get run for every new, well, it, it at least works for every new instance of the object. If you were to inherit from a parent class or use a mixin or something, then you would be calling everything twice. Um, so if you were to have you know, if every single object was to use this copyable meta class and you had like thousands upon thousands of instances that needed to be created, then you would only be running the initialization routine for the meta class once rather than twice. Or, you know, thousands of times on uh, thousands of objects. So that's one reason to use a meta class. Um, beyond that, there isn't really much that I could find. Generally speaking, you know, there are some people that think the meta classes are useful. Some people that think the custom meta classes should never be used. It took me actually a really long time to come up with a use case that I could demonstrate in the video, like a genuine actual use case um, that has some merit. Um, but, you know, even this may or may not be, you know, particularly useful. Uh, but that is the general idea of meta classes anyway. Even if custom meta classes are the sin of the earth and you should never use them, at least you should be able to understand what a meta class is and the role it plays in Python. Because, you know, as I said before, in the same way that classes construct objects, meta classes construct classes, and as such they are incredibly useful, albeit confusing, uh, things. So that brings us to the end of the video. If you liked it, then make sure to leave a like to let me know, and maybe subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. If you have any comments, uh, questions or anything, I wouldn't be surprised because it is quite a, um, kind of a complicated topic. Or if there's any, uh, you know, video topics that you want to see me do in the future, then I read every single one, so the feedback would be greatly appreciated. Um, if you want to support this channel monetarily, you can do so one of two ways. The first of which by becoming a patron using the link in the description. The second by becoming a member using the join button below. Uh, one pound a month and even you can be on the screen like these people. And I will see you in the next video for whatever I do next. So I'll see you for that.